Thank you very much. Uh, I would like by uh, thanking the organizers for the community of this workshop and to post it as a online for this wonderful opportunity. Um, I will be very brief, so you can relax. In that, I have a disclaimer I'm a lawyer, I'm a hard lawyer. So if any of my comments or questions are misplaced, uh, I uh, in address and <laughs> apologize for that. So I briefly have two questions that I uh, have some uh, comments to say over the day. Uh, in, in the article that uh, Professor and Professor Kulati, in your initial part, you refer to recent examples of a priori discriminations that appear legitimate, enumerate the categories of women, wage laborers, and colonized people. And it seems to me that you talk about these categories in the past. Uh, I grant that the vulner vulnerabilities of these categories are very visible today, but visibility, which I read uh, according to your text, as discrimination deconstruction is not per se indicative of a non exclusion. So, deconstruction does not automatically imply, nor is it uh, indicative of abolishment of the discriminatory practices, and some of them are still well entrenched. They're growingly entrenched if we think, if we think of wage laborers in the G economy. In the sense it is so, does your uh, analysis, particularly as to what the first, the first and second parts, attach any normative difference to these stages, this recognition, deconstruction, without effective dismantlement of domination, add any value to the individuals or groups at stake? I would say, from a legal and political perspective, that in this regard, deconstruction might entail a promise of economization. And perhaps a mandate to the law and the political system to operate accordingly. And here I evolve from the concept of autonomous law to that of responsive law in the sense that employed by Philip Nornay and, uh, and uh, self -link. And the second question despite your cautions against the adoption of any close list typologies, it seems that you do not frame them, at, at least at this moment, as conflicts. It may explain why only one of the examples you provide is rooted per se on economic power, and as mentioned above, seems to be located in the past. And the remainder uh, categories refer our framed as issues of recognition. And here I put the phrases from the distribution to recognition. However, in the context of peripheral countries, issues of poverty and exclusion seem still to be prevalent. Although they do not annihilate the other exclusionary uh, rules or clauses. Would you push for any specification of your analysis for those typically peripheral contexts? Thank you so much.